What's a story that you really want to tell? A few years ago I was working at a pretty miserable place. When I got off work it had begun to rain and I had no umbrella. The crosswalk was red and there wasn't any shelter from the rain nearby. So I just stood there getting soaked, desperately wishing I could be home. A couple of drunk middle-aged dudes came up waiting to cross the street. I didn't look them in case they got rowdy. But one of the men looked at me and handed me his umbrella. I tried to refuse but he said, your head is more precious than mine. Then the light turned green and he stumbled along sharing his friend's umbrella. It was a simple and incredibly kind gesture that made me feel like I mattered. I still have the umbrella and I'll never forget the moment a drunk old man cheered me up during a dark time. I also hope he didn't regret losing the umbrella after he sobered up, it was a really nice one. My grandfather was working on a US Navy base during World War II, as a welder, civilian, when he got his draft letter. He took it to the admiral on base, to let him know that he'd be leaving. The admiral called FDR and explained that my grandfather was the best welder he had, and that his effort towards the war would be better served if he stayed, working in his current role. My family still has the letter from the president to my grandfather, commending him for his work and excusing him from the draft, so long as he continued working at the base. My grandmother's house had a row of peony bushes in the landscaping. They were in full bloom deep pink and white, and you could smell them across the yard. My grandma was busy hanging sheets on the clothesline. The peonies smelled so tempting that six-year-old me just couldn't resist. I walked over to the peonies. My grandma yelled not to pick them. And I leaned over and took a big exaggerated whiff. I felt something that can only be described as what it would feel like if bugs were crawling all over my nose and throat and getting into my mouth. Because they were. The peony I smelled so deeply was covered in ants. What must have been 50 ants flew up my nose and down my throat. So now, I hate the smell of peonies. It was a beautiful night, full moon and a sky full of starts. I was contemplating all while tying a noose to kill myself. I was at peace with the decision, couldn't cope any longer with life. I was putting it around my neck when my best friend calls me. He straight asked, if you could drink milk, do you think you would have a favorite milkshake? And if yes, do you think it would be strawberry? It was so incredibly, beautifully, random. We ended up talking for two hours on that phone call, I cried in silence while he talked, and until today he has no clue about this and that he pretty much saved my life. I feel like a dork, but here it goes. I didn't know what periods were until I had them. So when I was bunking a class when I was 10 I told my teacher I had a stomachache and she asked me if I had periods, to which I said the next period is social studies. And she asked again and I said the last period was the science period. She said never mind and told me to go off. The same year when we were going for a trip from school when the guide teacher told us we had to take pads, I asked why we had to bring writing pads to my friend. She said sanitary pads and I said I don't know about y'all but my exam pad is pretty clean. In the early 60s, my dad had a nervous breakdown, due to severe abuse as a child, while in army basic training. He was sent to a mental hospital and released to his family when he was deemed well. After a while, he started hearing voices and was readmitted to another mental hospital. Around that same time, my mother, who had recently gotten divorced from her first husband, lost her mother and she tried to commit suicide. She was admitted to that same mental hospital. They got married in 1965. This is more just something I wouldn't say to someone other than my therapist. But I moved back in with my dad, I grew up with my mom in another state, and my half-brother walked up to me the other day and gave me a hug. I was super touched but confused. I asked him what that was for and he said nothing, I just wanted to hug you and I cried for a good 10 minutes after he walked out of my room. Growing up it wasn't like I didn't get affection, but it was always a reward. I got good grades, they were proud, but never just because. The idea that someone wanted to hug me just because just hit me in a way I wasn't expecting. I remember in fourth grade my teacher told us all to write letters for the author of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. We were supposed to ask questions like what inspired you to write these books or how should I get this bully to go away or some shit like that. I wrote my long ass letter about being bullied and not knowing what to do. It was my first year in an upper class school and was always made of for being poor, so it was actually really helpful for me to write all of it out and have it be read by someone famous. A couple weeks go by and I ask about it cause she never asked us to turn them in. She basically told me that never happened even when other students said they remembered it. 
Then because people said they remembered it, she sent me to office for disrespecting her. I was being gaslit by my fourth grade teacher and punished for her forgetting about the assignment. Duck you Mrs. Carla I am 21 and still remember that shit. When I was in first grade, my school took a field trip to the zoo. My class was walking through the monkey exhibit when one of them could be seen up on the branch doing what is known as the helicopter. If you don't know what that is, then it is basically grabbing your dong and flinging it around in a helicopter motion. The teacher was freaking out yelling at the class while we were all laughing at what the monkey was doing. That was definitely a memorable field trip. I got to climb into a crack in a glacier in Iceland and ventured nearly a mile into it. When I was about as far as you could be inside, my stomach started doing flips and my colon started working over time. I needed to shit and I needed to do it now, so I dropped my trousers and squeezed one out deep inside a glacier. It is the coolest place I have ever pooped in both senses of the word. My sister has Zoom calls with her half homeschool half public school class and I was too lazy to move so I promised I'd be quiet on the couch when she started. 30 minutes later I farted really loudly. She then proceeded to yell him not muted you'd think this was the end of it, but alas, it was not. The next day her teacher goes over online etiquette and specifically says make sure it's quiet no distractions or siblings farting in the background. When I was in third grade we took a field trip to a farm. I wasn't a city kid. The town I lived in had only 560 people in it, and before that we lived just out in the woods and raised chickens. So, yeah, not a city slicker. Thing is, the only farming experience I had was chickens. So it was really awesome when they showed us how to milk a cow. All the kids lined up to take a turn with it. As an ADHD, autistic kid, I didn't have time to wait. I wandered over to the nearby goat. I mean, goat milk is a thing, so no big deal, right? So this goat only had one udder. But that wasn't going to stop me from milking it. It took just a bit of doing, but I milked that goat. That one udder goat. None of the adults would ever explain why they were laughing when I told them this story. I used to date this girl. Let's call her Kim. We broke up and things remained relatively amiable between the two of us. I started dating someone else and she did the same, so we pretty much lost contact. Fast forward a few years. My girlfriend broke up with me and one day Kim and I randomly started talking on social media. We decided to hang out and have a drink to catch up, totally just as friends. We have some drinks and she starts to open up about how she wants to break up with her boyfriend but she is afraid to. She starts telling me about how she is literally afraid for her life. I think she is just being dramatic and so I laugh it off. She tells me that it is a serious matter and literally tells me, no, you don't understand. If he showed up right now and saw us hanging out together he would kill both of us. This freaks me out a little bit so I decided it was time to leave. She begged me not to leave. We hugged and she latched onto me. I have never experienced that feeling in my life, the feeling that someone needed my presence to feel safe against an actual threat to their life. Still, I wrote it off as her being overdramatic. Two days later her boyfriend shot her in the head with a shotgun and then turned it on himself. Murder slash suicide while I was sitting at home living my life without a care in the world. I know I shouldn't blame myself but I cannot shake the feeling that I could have done something. I should have taken her more seriously, but here we are. I'm still alive and she is not. It still beats me up to this day, 10-ish years later. Being a trans woman, I get a lot of questions about why I decided to transition. At work, I work in a nursing home, one of our residents asked me you're transgendered right? So I answered yes. She said, why would you ever want to be a boy? You're such a beautiful woman. Made my day. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.